This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. something a little special tonight that's why we started without all the promos and everything like that and just decided to start the show right here now uh it's an hour-long interview and the reason i didn't run the promos at the beginning is so that we can have enough time for everybody at uh, say 11:30 eastern to be able to join in and discuss stuff and so on and so forth but i think you're going to enjoy this interview so let's get it going right now Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, I guess we call you, can we, do we call you just governor or former governor of the state of New York? I'll answer to both. Oh, okay. So, Governor, how are you today? I'm great, Alex, and it's, it's great to be on your show. This yeah. is uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, David Patterson was the governor of New York, but only for a three-year term, right? About? Was that yes. About it? You took over for Elliot Spitzer, who kind of had to quit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a certain way that I always put it is, it's the best benefit that I ever got from the job. I wasn't even there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did, did you consider it a benefit? I mean, did you really want to be governor? I don't think I was planning on being governor. I always saw myself as more of an advocate mm -hmm. than than uh, than the establishment figure. Yeah. And um, and but what I was hoping was that at a certain point I would get a chance to be United States Senator from New York. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the United States Senator from New York, or one of the two of them, was Hillary Clinton, and she was going to run for president in 2008. So we're in 2006 now. Yeah. And we're they... talking to Governor Spitzer, and Governor Spitzer had to sort of negotiate with me because I was the head of one of the houses in the legislature. Right. I was the minority leader of the Senate, and I was about to become the majority leader. So, you know, that is the second most powerful position in Albany. Mm -hmm. But the lieutenant governor is second in command in case the governor has to leave or, uh, you know, resigns or passes away. And so what uh, I said to Governor Spitzer is, I think that Hillary Clinton has a very good chance to become president. And he agreed. And I said, well, then what, what all I ask of you is that when she leaves, if you would put me in her place, then, um, you know, then I could do this. I could be your lieutenant governor. Yeah. And uh, uh, his words to me were prophetic. Stay out of trouble and you've got it. <laughs> if I'd known what was going to happen in the future, I would have said, he, he, position, he, he, heal thyself. He didn't say, <laughs> he didn't say who had to stay out of uh, exactly. trouble. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you didn't get the job you wanted because by the time you had a, a, a senator had to be appointed, uh, there was uh, a, um, uh, a few problems with Elliot Spitzer, and you had become governor. So now you could not appoint yourself senator. So that I actually could. You could. And you know something, I wanted to, but I'll probably never get any credit for this. You know, maybe somebody will, uh, you know, write a couple of sentences and something about it one day. Yeah. The reason I didn't, because uh, everyone was telling me, Albany is a mess. The state is $21 billion in deficit. It's never been higher than $9 billion in deficit. Mm -hmm. You're going to get blamed for everything. <laughs> Here's your chance. Get out. Yeah. And yeah. the reason I didn't do it is that in the Senate, the uh, Senate majority leader was now next in line 
to the gubernatorial position under the lieutenant governor. So it was governor, lieutenant governor, and yeah. majority leader of the Senate. Right. At that particular time, the Democrats had a one vote majority in the Senate, and there were four people who I practically had to pay off to get them not to vote for the Republican when, uh, at that time. Mm-hmm. So I knew that if I left, there would be a struggle over who took my place and that that struggle would probably bring out the worst in everybody. Right. And so I thought, you know, most responsibly, I already knew what the budget was. I already had a plan to close it. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of um, eschewed the opportunity to take the, um, the, the, the Senate seat and, and moved on. And you appointed Kirsten Gillibrand. Kirsten right? Gillibrand. Yeah. You know, now in retrospect, yes, if I had known all the things that were going to happen to me <laughs> after I decided to stay, no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. And uh, if I knew that, I, I may have actually gone to the to the U.S. Senate. I'm, I I might have done that. Yeah. How do you feel about how she has served out as senator? Oh, I think uh, she's the one that really brought the issue of sexual harassment in the military, you know, Mm -hmm. out of the military into your living room if you're uh, watching the news. Uh, She's done a lot of, um, uh, you know, dynamic things. I didn't think she did anything close to where she could run for president and win. I don't really know what she was thinking about when she did that. Well, here's the thing that bothered me was the whole Al Franken thing. Yes. Exactly. And, yeah. and you know, Alex, I wasn't going to say it, but now that you brought Go it up. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> when when I was under investigation, she did the same thing to me. I mean, talking about biting the hand that feeds you. Really? And, and actually, I was on New York One when she started to run for president. Mm-hmm. And I called her out about it. I said, you know, all the investigations... Uh, were really just to get me not to run for re-election. That's what that was about. Well, what, and it's, what, what did they? What did they? What were they investigating with you? They were investigating the fact that I went to the World Series and didn't pay for the ticket, <laughs> and I got a huge fine over that. And and the legislature was so adamantly annoyed about how the Public Integrity Commission ruled on that that they rewrote the uh, rules about, you know, attending events and when you have to pay and when you don't uh, to completely coincide with what my counsel had advised them at the time is that if you're going to a jurisdiction where most of the people are it are people you represent, and of course at Yankee Stadium, it was New York, so I basically represented all of them, yeah. that you can do that. Yeah. So I kind of won in, in, in the end. Well, what I'm what I'm reminded about uh, the Al Franken thing, among other things, was she really went after someone who was maybe the best liberal in the Senate. I mean, the most consistent liberal. He, he, she contributed to his destruction. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think that what went on that was a, just a joke photo that they took. And in fact, the woman that they took it with knew it was being taken. You know, oh, that's the photo where she's yeah. sort of sleeping. Yeah, in the, and then he's think, like grabbing her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's and not even touching her. He's just going. You, you know, the the thing was that she uh, said, um, you know, if the, these investigations come to anything, uh, I think the governor needs to resign. And she's sort of implying mm-hmm. that I should resign even before the investigations were over. Yeah. And uh, I spoke to her about it after. Well. When, when she was running for president, and I made that statement, that was a big problem for her and her campaign. So she came back to me and said that she didn't mean that I should have resigned. She thought that one of my right. staff members yeah, should yeah. have resigned. So that, well, I just find her being duplicitous, and I find it very hard to vote for her. You know? Yeah, that, um, that was, uh, you know, sometimes where you jump on the bandwagon, mm-hmm. And something's happening and uh uh you know there was a woman who ran against a state senator back in 2018 mm-hmm. and he'd been accused of a few things but nothing had been proven and she and i were having lunch and i warned her about what had happened in some other situations like the one we just discussed 
And she said, I'm not saying a thing about him until they uh, find that he's done something. Well, now, she, and, did, she didn't have to run for the office. She was handed the office because she was filling out an office that was held by, uh, by uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, in, in, in retrospect, I uh, mean, do you feel that it was a good? Why did you make the move and was it a good one? Well, I knew that she was uh, an upstate member of the, of Congress. Mm -hmm. No one from upstate had served in the U.S. Senate for over 40 years. Right. I was a downstater from Harlem. Uh, you know, I think they thought I would take, you know, someone that I knew or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show that there was inclusion in the whole state. And although her political stands were rather conservative. It was the only way a Democrat could win upstate. And she broadened those stances later on. In fact, she broadened them within a week, which didn't look good. Yeah. And so I, um, uh, and, and I had met her a few times. I thought her, you know, sort of political views were in the right place. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, you know, I decided to, to, uh, to take a woman and, and again, uh, with Hillary Clinton, there were only 17 women in the United States Senate. Her leaving made it Senate back to 16. And there were a lot yeah. of women in New York who were very upset that uh, Hillary Clinton didn't win the Democratic nomination in 2008. In fact, that they openly would say that the old boys network beat racism. That, in other words, whatever right. racism Barack Obama was facing, it may not have been as strong as the um, the desire to vote for a man yeah. uh, had with uh, Barack Obama. You wanted to you wanted to be in the Senate, okay? Uh, did you have aspirations to be president, or is that something that you really didn't want? You know, I mean, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, um, uh, Chris Cuomo in an interview the other day said the real reason why his father yes, didn't I'm run. The, to oh, oh, listen to my my uh, Chris uh, Paul uh, echo stop my I have my echo right here my Alexa she's right over there because she's over here doing the same thing doing sometimes. the same thing to you uh, <laughs> no what I was gonna say is is that uh, now where was I I don't I don't remember that's old age in me uh, I was oh, I was gonna we, add, we were Oh, uh, we were on yeah. the issue of Chris Cuomo commenting. Yeah, oh, Chris Cuomo was talking about, he said, the real reason why my father, uh, Mario Cuomo, didn't run for president. He said there were all these things that we were a mob and things like that. You know, right. he said the reason he didn't do it is he told my mother and me at the dinner table, I'm not going to do it because I don't think I would make a good president. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he didn't think he would make a good president. Uh, would you have presidential aspirations had you made it to the Senate? So I remember I went to the Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado in 2008. Mm -hmm. It was late August. Yeah. And Barack Obama was nominated. And I went out to dinner with these people and they were saying, um, you know, you are New York's governor. But New York's governor, along with California and Florida and Texas and uh, Illinois and Massachusetts, those are the big states. You know, those are the mm -hmm. states where, oh, and of course, I did mention Florida, I guess, yeah. uh, that people listen to what those governors say because uh, those governors are always in the running to become a future president. And, um, and they said, so you should talk about national issues in addition to what you talk about generally. And I uh, said to them, look, guys, I've, I've been here five months. I, I've only started to understand, you know, like uh, where the laundry room is and you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And um, I don't have time to think about that. And yeah. they said, no, no, no. We think you could be a very good candidate for vice president 2012. I'm like, uh, there's a guy named Barack Obama. He's running for president. They're like, oh, come on. Barack Obama is an act, and it's going to end in November. Right. It's a nice book. <laughs> he wrote a nice book. He says something. Yeah. Uh, everybody says he always says the right thing, but no one ever remembers what he said. 
And they said, but you, on the other hand, who are immersed in this really could be that guy. And if the uh, African-American candidate didn't win for president, it wouldn't be hard to put an African-American on the ticket as vice president. Right. In other words, we've broken the glass ceiling there. Yeah. So you should think about, you know, working on this. Well, that, that's, and, a, you you know, know, that's a question that I always wanted to ask. And that is, I've always felt that governors make better presidents than senators because governors are really running a country in microcosm. In other words, you have all the same things you have to do being governor that you would have to do as being president, only being president, you do them on a larger scale. You see, Alex, it's very profound because after the, the Revolutionary War mm -hmm. and the overthrow of the king's rule in the United States, mm -hmm. the political people did not want anything that looked like one person had too much power. And so throughout the 19th century, there were always these problems because when you get elected, mm -hmm. your first obligation is to your area. You know, whether it's the city you're from or the county you're from or the village you're from. And that's been pretty much the way it's been, but they could never get anything done because everybody was for themselves. Mm -hmm. And finally, there was a I think he was a cabinet member in the Woodrow Wilson administration, which was over a hundred years ago. Yeah. And I, I know his first name was John. I can't remember his last name, but he was writing a proposal for really what was a, a house cleaning of government in New York around mm -hmm. this time, about a hundred years ago. And he wrote, and I'll uh, update it for uh, current conversation, that one person, should be up all night worrying about the state's problems and that would be the governor right uh he actually wrote one man but we have a woman governor now so uh you know he he was not prophetic in that regard <laughs> but it was a great idea yeah because sometimes somebody just has to be the leader everything can't be by fiat it's really why socialism has never worked because when they try to employ it Everybody comes to the table with these great intentions, but one person to get ahead of everyone else mm -hmm. then starts breaking all the rules of what socialism is supposed to be about in the first place. Yeah. So the concept of socialism has never bothered me. It's the practice of it that doesn't ever seem to work. Yeah. yeah. So when when we so when we look at um, people who run for office. So I was a state senator. That was all I did. Then I was lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. I was never really in charge. And the first couple of months of that, Alex, I struggled with that because right. I was sort of waiting for someone to shake me one morning and it was spit for like, oh, I'm back now. Uh, I've you know, decided to take me. the job back. You know, yeah. you can get out of my bed and go back to doing whatever you lieutenant governors do. And, um, and then I realized that I was being taken advantage of that, you know, it's just like parents, you know, that right. when you're younger, you figure out what your parents don't know how to handle. And that's what you do just to drive them crazy. Right. And uh, it was a situation where the legislature was actually wanting to have the power, not only to vote on the budget, but to write it with the governor. This is the craziest idea I ever heard of. And uh, they had lost a court case over this issue, but now they were trying to force me into sharing the power. And um, and when uh, uh, a uh, a budget is late, they pass these um, th these measures called extenders, where the government will continue to operate exactly how it has mm -hmm. until you pass the budget. Right. So I found out that the extender did not require the legislature to agree with the governor. Mm -hmm. They have to vote the budget up or down. Yeah. So everything I wanted, I put into the extender and the two legislative leaders, I thought they were going to get up and throw their chairs at me. <laughs> and they said, um, uh, and one of them who had been particularly snide toward me forever said, um, this is the most political, naked power grab I've ever seen in my life. And I said, uh, I could think of something that's worse. And he said, what's that? I said, what I'm gonna do tomorrow. 
And I just looked at him. <laughs> and I think in that moment, the axis had, had shifted. And I now understood that sometimes you shouldn't uh, go overboard with it, as many governors have done okay. time and time again. Let, let, but sometimes yeah, yeah. somebody has got to put a stop to all of the, uh, you know, the, the activities that are delaying government rather than practicing it. What is it about the governorship of New York? Now, we had Elliot Spitzer. He was uh, chased away, chased out of office because of the hooker scandal, okay? And then we had uh, Andrew Cuomo, who for some reason quit. I still can't figure out why, but, you know, I mean, it was later found out that mo I don't think any of the charges against him were ever, uh, ever, ever completed. Um, well, and then uh, there was you with uh, Gillibrand trying to get you to resign. What is it about the New York governorship that is so fragile? Well, I think they were individual cases. In Spitzer's case, mm -hmm. he couldn't deny what had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, he was caught in a sting. And he did the honorable thing. He got out. He actually waited five years and came back and ran for New York City controller. And had he run, had he started to run a month or two before, I think he would have won. Um, so in his case, you'd have to say he took the honorable way out. Okay. Now, um, in my case, the uh, most of the uh, accusations against me, who had lived 55 and a half years and not been accused of anything. Right. But I had been contacted through an intermediary. This is going to sound like an episode in The Godfather. And they said, listen, um, uh, Gov uh, Andrew Cuomo is going to run against you. He will beat you. The best way is take the way out now. And if you take the way out now, uh, you know, we'll help you um, as you transition back into, you know, just away from public life. Mm -hmm. And I told them what they could do with themselves. And within three weeks of my response it seemed like every little thing that i ever did uh wound up in the newspapers very carefully orchestrated and um wow and 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 very antagonistic and um and very painful to be on on the other end but correct uh, correct me if i'm wrong but didn't you say when you became governor because it was under very dicey circumstances that you would not run for a term uh, another term in other words you would fill out Spitzer's no, term and I, then you would not I run. only said it then oh. I only said it that that the investigations were of a of a of a manner mm -hmm. that um I would have had to spend most of my time defending myself and I didn't think a person could run the state and have yeah. those issues at the same time. So I didn't resign. I just said I wouldn't want, uh, run for uh, re-election. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting but about you, this... But you didn't wind up running against Cuomo, did you? No. no. The interesting thing is the person investigating me was Cuomo himself. So he was a candidate <laughs> and a prosecutor. He was the attorney the general time. of the state at the time, right? He, he was yeah. the attorney general of the state. And he defended this when I pointed out to the media that how do you investigate someone and run against them at the same time? His poll numbers dropped 15 points in that two week period. And uh, to save himself, he uh, withdrew and named the former chief judge of the Court of Appeals, Judith Kay, to run the investigation. But it was all of Cuomo's deputized attorney generals who were in it. So they just switch yeah. it around to make it look like he yeah. wasn't running yeah. it, but he was. And what I thought was so funny is that when he got investigated by the Attorney General Tish James, who wanted to run for governor, mm -hmm. he said, how can someone who wants to yeah. run for governor be investigating me at the same time? Gee, I wonder where he got that thought from. Yeah, let, let, me, so, it, uh -huh. let me ask you, the lieutenant governorship, I was led to believe the lieutenant governorship runs independently uh, by himself, by herself, uh, for lieutenant governor, uh, independent of the party or the candidate that's running for governor, that you could have a Republican lieutenant governor in the state of New York and a Democratic uh, governor. Is that right? No. 
You couldn't. No, you couldn't. Okay. What happens is in the primaries, in the party primaries, mm -hmm. the governor and lieutenant governor are not affixed. They're, I they're see. not together. Okay. Then the two winners, the person who wins for governor and the person who runs for lieutenant governor, run together. Okay. All right. This was changed back around 50 years ago. So far, it hasn't happened where a uh, lieutenant governor say that a uh, governor, gubernatorial candidate mm -hmm. wants to run with lost the primary. Uh, it looked like it was going to happen this year, but Governor Hochul got her lieutenant governor out, mm -hmm. uh, she and the federal government who indicted him, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and she found another candidate. And in one month, he was actually able to win that election, which was an amazing event. But, the, but, um, the, so the Republicans would have two Republicans running, a lieutenant governor and and governor, and so would the Democrats. Wow. So that you, you would never have that situation. What was interesting, though, Alex, is that when we had the huge budget crisis, and I realized that the Democrats were not going to be supportive because of all of the programs that we were going to have to cut to keep the state from going into insolvency. Mm -hmm. And the Republicans, their way of hanging on to their pork was to say that I was overestimating the revenues. So they had an unholy alliance where they were both trying to stop me from doing things. And around that time, I went to the former assemblyman who was the Republican candidate against Spitzer, but I always thought was a real good government person. And he was a Republican and asked him if he would like to come in and be my chief of staff. That way, we now had a Republican and a Democrat pointing out that the measures we were taking were right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason he declined, because he said he was fascinated by the offer, he wanted to do it. But the reason he declined was, you know, it is, Alex, people get out of... Uh, politics and they get the private sector and they start to make some money and then they wonder why they were ever in the pro public sector <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask you a couple of things uh, uh, about uh, just about the way politics are going today do you, do you think Cuomo, uh, Cuomo should have uh, should have resigned I mean I I I liked him only this much I said he saved my life that I'm an 82 year old man right now it was 80 I think at the time uh, COVID was running rampant, and he got on television every night and he rallied the state and the people, if he did nothing else, into wearing masks and t not going out and keeping their distance and, you know, one thing after another. And, so I, he, and a, a I, feel, I feel in that respect, he saved my life. And then when they said, okay, he patted some woman on the ass, I went, is that enough to get rid of a guy who's done this much for the state? So, Alex, you've opened up all sorts of uh, discussion opportunities. I'll start with, <laughs> I wrote uh, my autobiography that I released in 2020. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I wrote exactly what you said about the way he handled the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I also wrote that I thought he was the most of Effective administrator. In other words, he knew how to run things. He'd been secretary of HUD at one point. Yeah. He was a manager. Yeah. Yeah. And um, in other words, you're saying he had the skills. Yes. He's a terrific yeah. manager. And then what I didn't know was he became a pretty good therapist uh, all those days that we watched him on television. And at the time, I was asked about it, and I said, you know, who needs Dr. Phil? We have Governor Cuomo. He'll, he'll solve all, the, all your personal problems. And and, uh, and and he was 10 times better than Giuliani after September 11th. I mean, they act like uh, his comments were the greatest of all time. But Andrew Cuomo really was the one who yeah. I think the country rallied around and uh, was, you know, very... Um, made a, a great impression of himself and I thought was ticketed to run for president in 2024 because I thought Trump would get reelected during during that time. I just thought he would. Yeah. Now, but then you come to the part I didn't write about uh, and it was 
who Andrew Cuomo is as a person. Yeah, yeah. He is ruthless. Yep. Has no ethics or morals about doing anything to anybody else. And then gets so hurt and, and upset when someone does something to him. It's, <laughs> it's shocking to see it happen. <laughs> and 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 that's that's who he is. I remember when Spitzer named me as his lieutenant governor candidate, this upset Andrew because Andrew was trying to work out this deal where he was going to support uh, a woman who was going to run for lieutenant governor and one of the woman's mm -hmm. friends would in turn endorse him. Mm -hmm. He thought he had this deal. They were never going to do this with him. And when I get named, he calls up a man named Darren Dopp, who was his press secretary, but at the time was working for Spitzer. And he said, you've got to go tell Elliot, they can't take Patterson. You can't trust him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, uh, he's not serious about the work. They, they, they can't take him. And uh, so Dopp went to Spitzer. Spitzer was infuriated by the suggestion, called Cuomo up and told him, listen, we background checked him. All the legislators seem to like him. Everything is uh, a go. And we don't know where you're getting your information from, but don't interfere in my yeah, but nomination I again. I, but I want to ask you a question. You're telling me all these stories about, you know, I mean, Cuomo, we all know, was very ruthless, but he was never ruthless against me. You know, he was never ruthless against uh, uh, the people. He was ruthless within what he did. But I, you know, I wonder, you come from a political family. Your father was a very well-respected uh, uh, le legislator, uh, Basil Patterson, if I know the name correctly. And you saw what went on in politics when you were growing up. It was all around you. You know, why you see what goes on and the games that are played and these games have been going on I mean, forever. Why Alex, did you, why did you do it? Why didn't you just go and become a investment broker or something? <laughs> well, it's interesting because um oh, by the way what I was gonna say about uh a Cuomo is when he found out he couldn't change Spitzer's mind. Mm hmm told him, please don't tell Patterson because I have to work with him. And uh, Spitzer called me up and told me that he said that. And uh, he called the next day to tell me that this was all a lie that Spitzer had made up. And he said, you got to keep your eye on Spitzer. He's a tricky guy. Yeah. He, 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 you can't trust him. He's erratic, yeah. Yeah. untrustworthy. So he actually told both of us the same thing about the other. And I grew up in a political family, but I can honestly tell you, Alex, that 50 years ago, things were a lot different. I mean, there were games, and people one-upmanship, and people trying to get offices away from each other, and, you know, yeah. uh, nasty articles about your opponents, that kind of thing. But there was a certain sense of decorum that you didn't want to have total fallouts, and that at a certain point, people would uh, back off. And there were certain situations that I saw where people, they could have made a big deal about it, but they didn't because whatever the situation was. There, uh, it, it was different in those days. I mean, everybody knew, all the press knew. Uh, when I, and I, I was first getting going in this business when Kennedy became president. The press knew about his affairs. They knew who the affairs were with. Yes. You know? But they didn't report it. And the reason, and I asked somebody in the press, this, why don't you report it? And he said, that's not proper. That's not the way things are done. In other words, in those days, we wouldn't have thought about ratting out Kennedy for that. Right. That was his private life. So then what I would say is that in this particular case, the, um, the, environment in the workplace was so toxic with the Cuomo's. I mean, the Cuomo staff would call up and yell at anybody. If, if <laughs> they took a position that they didn't like. And um, yeah. Oh, he was and, very intimidating, I understand. Oh, totally. Yeah. And uh, and really, uh, you know, some of the, uh, I mean, I happen to know that there was a staff member of mine who he didn't like. Couldn't stand it. 
this guy was very closely associated with the Kennedys. Mm -hmm. He went and researched and found out that the guy hadn't paid taxes for a while. And after September 11th, he lost a number of friends and he kind of went into depression and he, he didn't pay taxes and he'd gotten himself together. It was 20 years later. It was 10 years later. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that story got put out about the person and the person never got mad at Cuomo because when the story got put out, he called him up and took him out to dinner like he was a friend. Mm -hmm. And he was the friend who was on the other end of the knife that had been stuck in him. So <laughs> it was, I think, the intensity of it that yeah. uh, uh, turned people off. But you ask me, why did I get into politics? That was kind of interesting because I wasn't trying to get into politics. In other words, it wasn't the family business you did, no. No, okay. the only one who had gotten involved was my father, mm -hmm. and I was very supportive of him. Mm -hmm. But um, and in, he was very uh, he was very well liked and respected as well. Yeah, yeah. But in in 1985, um, I had told David Dingens, who would become the first mayor, mm -hmm. that I thought the first that black my father, mayor, right? The first <laughs> black mayor, <laughs> right? First yeah. Mayor. <laughs> and I I said to him, you know. I want to help, but I don't want to do work directly for my father. So if you're running for something, I'll I'll work for you. And I work, I worked in his campaign for Manhattan Borough President. Now at the time, my father changed his mind and did not run for mayor. Mm -hmm. So I'm working for Dinkins, and one night they sent me to this event up in West Harlem, and uh, apparently this political club didn't like Dinkins, and apparently the feeling was mutual. So Dingens refused to go, and his surrogate, the person who would take his place, you know, when he had two events at the same time, he wouldn't go either because he didn't like the people. So they send me, right. who was actually the fundraiser. I wasn't working on the issues, and they gave me these issues papers to read, and I go to this place, and I go in there at 7 o'clock in the evening, and as soon as I sit down, everything I say, as far as these people's concerned, is, is wrong. Right. If they asked me, what's the day after Tuesday? And I said, I believe it's Wednesday. They would say, and who made you think that? That's part of your problem. You don't know anything about us and our neighborhood. Oh, they just went on and on. And I'm sitting there trying to get through this this interview. And finally, the man who was running the club, yeah. who incidentally had been convicted of stealing cheese from an anti-poverty program. So in Harlem, his nickname was the cheese thief. The cheese thief stops the... You know the 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 um, just the the destruction of me, mm -hmm. and he says, "Look, um, we have nothing against you, but the problem is that Dingens is the one running. He didn't come here, and that's why we've acted this way." And uh, I said, "Listen, that's you know your prerogative," and he, he said, "Well, thanks for coming." And this old lady who had beaten up on me three times in this meeting. Yeah. And she's sitting in the front row. So from the front row, I can actually see her. She puts her hand and says, I have one more question. I'm like, oh, no, not again. And she says, um, first of all, young man, I'm not voting for your candidate because he didn't have the decency to come here and speak this evening. I said, I understand, ma'am. And she said, but I have a question for you. She said, I really admire how you sat there for an hour and a half <laughs> and, put up and answered our questions. <laughs> And one look at your face would tell anyone that you felt like you were under a great deal of pressure, but you answered the questions, you didn't hit back, you didn't insult anyone. And she said, that's the character that I would look for in an elected official. I'd like to see you run for something one day, and when you do, I'm gonna help you. And was she it, got it, up and yeah. clapped, and then the whole room clapped. And now, Alex, all I had to do was to fight back tears because I can't believe this was, is that Was that a light bulb moment? I mean, A light bulb it, moment. It yeah. changed my life because three months later, yeah. the s senator passed away. And when he passed away, three people that were in that room went to the guy who was most responsible for choosing the mm -hmm. next candidate. And they said, take that kid. Um, he probably has a lot to learn. But we see something in him, and we think he'd be this great. This was for state community. state senator. Yeah, it was yeah. for state senate. Wow. And, now let me and, let me let me ask you something. When we first talked on the phone a couple of weeks ago, because we hadn't talked for about a couple of years, uh, uh, you, you said, "Boy, times have changed 
politics just isn't what it used to be you know and you were saying things are really ugly in your estimation how ugly are things right now they've gotten to the point where i think that politics in the united states is the new religion mm -hmm. that people's fervor toward each other yeah. is at a level as it would be as if we were going to have a national religion and we were all going to vote for which religion we think should be the one um the anger the acrimony i mean the abs and then the dishonesty i mean how could a man stand up in front of people after he lost an election by seven million votes and 76 electoral votes and say it was stolen and yet 40 percent of the population believes him and another 10 percent don't care because he stands for the issues they stand for so as i see it now there's no mutually agreed upon situation where a person does the right thing so whatever you think of richard nixon when he realized that oh, yeah, my, they had him he resigned my, my whole argument was i said when when uh, trump was president well i guess bush doesn't look that bad to you as, oh as a matter of fact uh reagan doesn't look that bad to you as a matter of fact nixon doesn't look that bad to you as a matter of fact hitler doesn't look that bad to you. <laughs> well you know it's 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 interesting because when you find out that the day after the january 6th uh riot yeah that uh trump had a speech where he was saying our movement to overturn the election does not involve violence and he wouldn't say it he crossed it out yeah and the secret service people that testified at the hearing said that when they saw all the people with the guns and they said this is dangerous he goes but they're not here to shoot me so we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the uh, you have to really think about the the psychiatric nature of a mind that would allow somebody to say oh, some he, of the things he's, that he's he nuts. Said. He's nuts. And but the ignorance is only surpassed by the people who just gung ho support him, no matter what he does. Uh, you know, when they started uh, the the vaccines. All these people gave him credit for it, said, oh, it was his warp speed with the vaccines. And look, and I'm not saying he, he, that some of uh, government operated on on in some levels well under him, probably because he didn't bother them. But the the that that's, you know, one example. And then, you know, on the other hand, uh, you have people who are are. Uh, organizing into paramilitary groups because they think there's going to be a civil war and the democrats are not immune from this conduct either because i regularly hear mm -hmm. uh, things that are stated uh like biden blaming inflation on putin now that's new <laughs> yeah yeah He's done a lot of things but i can just hear him you know at the uh you know, uh, in, I don't think uh, he can even. I don't think he can even say that Putin's responsible for the gas prices because most of our gas did not come from Russia. Exactly. You know. And it's it's it's. Listen, I, I think clean and renewable energy sources have got to be the future. I think the yeah. uh, they say if the Earth temperature rises by two degrees, it could be totally disruptive. And to give an example. During the ice age, the Earth temperature was eight degrees less than it is now. So it just takes a slight movement to make huge changes. Right. And what I would suggest is that uh, even the Democrats, anything, uh, any chance to distract people from what's going on to what Trump did uh, is taken advantage of. So you get to the to this, the place where nobody really trusts anyone to uh, to make decisions based on how they would affect the population, but make them based on the next election cycle. Let me ask you this. They just passed a bill in Washington, as you know, as you're aware of, uh, with, with uh, some new things like, you know, regulating drug prices and things like that. And they're making a big deal out of it. And as I look at it, it looks like a big bunch of nothing 
really. I mean, when it came, comes to drugs being, uh, you know, the Medicare can negotiate drugs, there's just a limited amount of drugs they can negotiate on, not all drugs, you know. So I, I felt that way too. It was splitting hairs over, yeah. the, I mean, the difference between doing this bill and not doing this bill didn't seem that big to me. The uh, uh, in, environmental measures looked actually pretty good, mm -hmm. but then the the um, uh, you know they have restrictions on a lot of things that I think will be detrimental, and uh, but they were able to pass the bill, and that's probably the most significant part about it is that they actually were able to pass. It. Yeah, but today, in order to pass a bill or to get anything done, you have to compromise, and we could say that compromise is a wonderful thing, but compromise sometimes brings you the most watered down answer to a problem you can come up with you know? and i think that's what we're going to get in the present case yeah um the Do you democrats think will laud it as uh uh you know game changing and the republicans will say it hurts business and they might both be right but the point is that um we have a myriad of problems in this country right now and whether to address them or not is now filtered through the scope of politics, I think, more than ever before. Well, what is David Patterson doing now? You were running, you were ha helping run the Democratic Party in New York, weren't you? Are you still doing that? No, I, I, I was running the Democratic Party in New York. Uh, now I represent clients that, you know, have interest in government and, mm -hmm. and, and I, um, I work for a company I really like. They do land, language translation services. Yeah. And this is always a problem in government. You you could set up these places where people could come and you could help them, mm -hmm. but they spoke different languages. And the number of languages that they're speaking in this country is multiplying like logarithmatically. So I've kind of enjoyed uh, trying to get the uh, emergency rooms and hospitals to look at the fact that they can use an iPad yeah. and get a translator who's not even there in 20 seconds. That's what technology provides us. And so when I, you know, see these good ideas and I think they'll work, I, you know, sign on and help them out. Yeah. And the other thing that's happened in your life uh, is you've gotten married again. Yes. Um, I, I'm uh, my third anniversary will be on Wednesday. So, um, well, I haven't uh, seen you since you got married. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What made you decide how many hey, you've been married before, right? I was married for 20 years. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it was just uh, like going in different directions. So there wasn't any real you know, hey, tw after 20 years, you become two different people sometimes. Well, yes, I, uh, made no real major falling out. And um, I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking about that happening again. Um, but I met a woman that I realized that I liked very much. Mm. And then after meeting her, I saw her uh, again. And I was having a conversation with her and who comes into the event but my former wife and she comes up and she says hi David and I said hi and she says hi Mary and they hugged each other and I'm like oh no this is the last thing I need I thought it was some girlfriend of hers or something but it just turned out that they'd seen each other at a lot of events and they knew each other's yeah. name so I could go on and uh, pursue happiness well after. you you uh, you you kind of married in a pol sometimes people are political opposites uh, and they get along. Uh, was she your political opposite? Because can we say who she was married to at one time? Yes, she was married to the guardian angel Curtis Sleva. Yes. But she's kind of a, a free thinker and open minded. And, you know, so the. the um, because you're a real liberal. You know, you're yeah. a real lefty. And I, and, I, and, I think I, I've. I've uh, what would you say? It? I, I've mellowed a little bit in my old age but well, we all do but, but generally <laughs> speaking you know i i've always seen myself as a progressive mm -hmm. and um and but one of the things that i did learn really from this marriage and uh, you know some of the people i've met 
through yeah. it and that kind of thing is there are really some people in this country who have not had the opportunity to hear a story other than the way it was presented to them in grade school and so for instance the issue of michelle obama when uh when barack obama won one of the major primaries mm -hmm. and she said you know for the first time i'm really happy to be an american mm -hmm. and she got harpooned for this time yeah. and time again yeah. And this came up one night, you know, early on when I was, you know, with a group of people that were friends of my, my wife. And and I explained to them, well, you have to understand that this woman's father was unemployed and he had a skill and he still couldn't work. And that made the mother, the family, uh, uh, the head of the family and um, the, the, the mother had other ambitions, but she was doing it working in department stores and that kind of thing. Right. Right. And this girl grew up watching people literally walk right off the streets and get jobs and her father couldn't get a job. And then he wound up in uh, very poor physical health and they couldn't get the type of health care that they should have gotten at the time. And um, and when I explained it that way, they were like, oh, so that's why she said that. I said, yeah, well, you have to understand sometimes behind every face, there's a story. Right. And wait, maybe their person might say something that's really uh, anathema to how you feel, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to try and wonder why she might say that. And I said, because I told my father the same time she was saying this, that there was no way, I'm sorry, my father told me there was no way that I would be around, uh, there was no way that he would be around to see a black president. And he said, and by the way, in case you're wondering, there's no way you'll be around either. And within five months of when he said that, Barack Obama was elected president. So what I would just uh, say is, if I have actually felt good about something, it's that sometimes I've now met some people who actually will take the time to listen to why I feel certain ways of certain things and why other people I know feel exactly the same yeah, way. Yeah. And uh, and I'd say that that's a, well, I didn't think. You know, I mean, as for me, I don't think I'm gonna see a Jewish president in my lifetime. I mean, that's one we haven't had yet. Uh, but, uh, and, and I, you know, I don't know if we're gonna see a woman as a president yet. I, I don't know if that's in the, uh, in the offing, you know? That would be actually very interesting to see what would happen if a woman ran for president. Now, I think that um, there are some, you know, I, I thought it was interesting when Spitzer was governor. He was gunning to run for president mm -hmm. and he was middle of the road enough to possibly have won. But um, you know, since that time, uh, it will be very interesting to see who runs and how parties deal with them. I'm, I'm waiting to see if after the Republicans are always telling about talking about all these things they do for black people. I want to see if they put a black candidate up for president or vice president. They've, they've done the woman. Well, they have to find a black Republican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not uh, always the easiest uh, thing to do. And I don't know why a black person would be a Republican because it's in, against his own best interests. You know, I could never see that. Why Why people would vote against their own best interests. Let me ask you this, a couple of last questions because I know that you have uh, more to your life than talking with an out-of-work radio announcer. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 do you think Biden's going to run for president again? No. I, I, I think for the good of the party and even at times for the good of the country mm -hmm. that um, it, 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 he should leave it at, at these four years. Okay. Uh, and so the question then becomes who should run? Uh you know, interestingly enough, this comes up a lot when, mm -hmm. when you discuss who's in and who might be in. Mm -hmm. People who probably 
would win are people who are not well known to us at this time. Like there's no one who like o- like Obama came out of nowhere. It, exactly, he yeah. came out of nowhere, and, and they were thinking who uh, the Democrats are going to run Hillary. But if it's not Hillary, who would it be? And uh, you know, Joe Biden was trying to run for the. Could fifth it be time. because what you're saying is that kind of person doesn't have any baggage? No, it's just that um, the way the media cycles work, mm-hmm. it's all about the president. Yeah. It's all about uh, the leaders of the other party that don't like the president and don't mm-hmm. think he's doing a good job. Mm-hmm. It's it's hard these days with all the media and even with all the social media for a potentially good candidate to really become that well known. Mm-hmm. Um, there's someone out there who, who, I'm just not thinking of who it is, but you know, you take someone like on, on the Republican side, like DeSantis, mm-hmm. he has actually done well enough that I think there are a lot of problem Republicans who think, you know what, we could elect DeSantis, we can get all the conservatism out of him, and we don't have to hear him make all kinds of mistakes like Trump. I think he's one of the, someone that's put himself in that position. Right. On the Democratic side, um, Gavin Newsom? Possibly. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Yeah. Also, there are a few women elected officials who are Democrats, Mm -hmm. congressional people and a few senators. Uh, That would be an interesting uh, uh, race to, as I said, to say a woman, see a woman run for president from either party. Mm -hmm. Uh, My my question, I guess, would be, um, aren't, when people are running for president, when I mentioned Gavin Newsom, he comes, he's a positive in what I'm about to say. Optics are very important these days. So he's a good-looking guy. He speaks well. You know, he's got all the... He all, he checks all the boxes. So, I mean, it has to be somebody either either Newsom or Newsom-like. Somebody like Obama. Good-looking guy. Optics were terrific, you know? And optics are important, are they not? Oh, they always are. You know, um... People who listened to the Nixon-Kennedy debate in 1960 mm-hmm. um, by one and a half percent thought Nixon won the debate. Right. People who watched the debate Kennedy were d- 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 yeah. with Kennedy. Kennedy had spent the weekend swimming. Nixon had spent the weekend studying. And Nixon had a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> that, <laughs> yes. that, that the shadow that went round the country. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yep, 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 yep. And yep. Um, sometimes it, it's sometimes it really is all about optics. Well, by the way, and, s- stick around for a second when we when we're finished here, so that I can uh, talk to you just for a moment privately. Uh, but I really want to thank you for spending this time with us because uh, I, you, your person really knows politics. You know, it's almost like you wake wake up and you have a a bowl full of politics. Yes, <laughs> you know, uh, and and so I enjoy talking with you about it because well, it, it's it's the, it's a it's, it opens my mind to a lot of things. For the people who are uh, watching this, I was 15 years old, living in Hempstead, <laughs> Long Island. Yeah, and uh, turned on my radio one night and heard this guy named Alex Bennett, and of course I was in high school, so I listened to him all night. I'd stagger into school because uh, I you know, finally fell asleep at three or four o'clock in the morning. And then uh, I remember you going on to uh, WBA. No, I went to WMC. WPLJ. Other places that. that, PLJ. uh, PLJ, PLJ, yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, I, uh, you know, at a certain point uh, you uh, were, uh, you know, out out of the market. Mm-hmm. But you were someone that I always wanted to meet. And there were these close calls. Apparently, you got fired from some station in the area. Yeah. And some woman that worked for you was a friend of a friend of mine. And um, I guess when you were dismissed, she couldn't come out with us that evening or something like that. And uh, 
And I said, what's the name of the guy who got fired? He said, Alex Bennett. I said, call him back. I want to meet him. I said, this is not the time to meet him. <laughs> and then uh, in 2013, when I was uh, substituting for, of all people, Curtis Leva, mm -hmm. uh, on The Answer, uh, he listed you as one of the guests. And I said, I'm just going to do this interview with him. I'm not going to say a word. But when it's over, I'm going to call him and tell him I have waited 50 years for this conversation. <laughs> and that's how, that's how we wound up having lunch together and getting to know each other. And, Absolutely. And it's one of the um, more important moments of my life, uh, David. Uh, Governor, thank you so much for talking with us. Stick around for a second. And uh, sure. I, I just want to thank you because uh, this is a lot of time to spend with, you know, as I say, an out-of-work announcer. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Governor. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, yes, yes. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I enjoyed it, doing it, and I enjoyed just listening to it again. Let me turn on the lights. There we go. Yeah, I always forget something. That's what happens when you get old. Let's get to our citizen panel, okay? I think that we should do that because... Uh, it's kind of kind of time to. I know I, I avoided them for quite a while here, but uh, here they are. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you, Alan and Josh and uh, Vernon? Good. How are you? Good. What a great interview. And thank you. I, I I thought I I I had my wife listen to it the other day, and she she thought it was very good too. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think the world's missing out. They should hire you to interview people well <laughs> i mean i know you're very good at this yeah but you know maybe in your senior twilight years you could get on an interview show somewhere well you know i mean interviewing is what i did best okay right uh and uh, you know um well you still got it yeah but nobody's gonna hire me so what the hell you know okay so Plus, you know, I get very tired easily now. I don't know why. You know, I find it difficult now to do an hour. Uh, and I used to be able to do three hours standing on my head. You know, Welcome to your 60s. Yeah, welcome to my 80s. You know. Hello, Josh. How are you doing this evening? Good. How are you? I'm fine. And Vernon, how are you? I'm nursing a broken rib. What? How did that happen? I was out walking my dog a week ago and fell on the left side and fractured my number five rib now they don't do anything for that do they they just uh no, no. What, what? just rest and rest and uh Man, stay, it feels... stay off your feet as much as you can yeah yeah well just lie there take it easy enjoy the show in fact, i'm sleeping in this chair really yeah i cannot lay down it hurts too much but really oh boy Laughing and breathing probably hurt a lot too, huh? Breath breathing's not too bad, but yeah, laughing, coughing, you know, I have to grab a pillow or something and hug it real tight when I cough. Did, oh, yeah. who, did Marjorie have a problem with, with, with a rib once? I can't remember now, but I know somebody who had a broken rib and they didn't do anything for it. You just had to be careful with it. Yeah, yes, uh, Kevin, hello. How you doing? Yeah, you raised your hand for some reason? No, I just said I broke my rib. Oh, you broke a rib too. Okay. And I had to go camping. Don't tell me you broke a rib too, Phil. No, uh, oh, okay. I was just waving hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't wave. <laughs> oh, so what brings you to our little party tonight, uh, Phil? Well, I, uh, I tuned in. I just got off a Zoom call. Uh, I was going to watch uh, your interview tomorrow or mm -hmm. later tonight, mm -hmm. and then I saw that uh, you were down to just a few people, and I figured I would. Well, we, I was it was in front of the computer anyway. Let me, you know, put it, my two cents in. It was an hour-long interview. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was an hour-long presentation. Yes. Uh, yes. On sharks, polar bears, uh, oh. a great photographer named uh, Amos. Nachum from uh, he's an Israeli mm -hmm. and I was on a whale trip with him uh, about a month ago and uh, he was doing a presentation to our underwater photography club mm -hmm. okay that's fascinating uh, 
Here's here's my show and tell. There's a picture of Trump <laughs> as a statue. Make America great. Oh. And there's the little pin holder in his ass. I, <laughs> practice with that? Huh? You practice uh, when you see Trump in person? Uh, absolutely, especially now. I like America that. great. We got Josh here. I'd like to get Josh's uh, take on uh, the news today. Uh, did it turn out pretty much as you expected it would? Um, well, I didn't really hear too much because I had a really, really super busy day. Yeah. But when I got in the car uh, on the way home, um, was that today that the AG gave a press conference? Was no, that, that, was, that was yesterday. There, okay, so yesterday, yesterday, and I heard was it two days ago. Um. I think it was the AG. No, I think that I think that one was yesterday, and yesterday. Uh, we heard I uh, heard that, and then today I'm not you know too sure of much today. I mean I had the newspaper open um, a little bit while you were interviewing, so I did see you know some of the headlines there about the classified documents and stuff like that. I mean is that what you're talking about? Yeah, then I yeah. assume yeah they sure. finally uh, well what happened was is that the AG said that unless uh, the, the Trump people complained they were going to ask the judge to release the warrant and the uh, the, the, the mm. things that were taken from the property right and uh, so uh, they didn't complain and they were able to do it but you know something what's kind of interesting we could have had all this information uh, uh, a couple of days ago because as right. soon as Trump got the warrant the search warrant and he got the list of the property that was taken, he could have released that himself. He's allowed to yeah. do that, and he right. didn't. But then he couldn't fundraise off of it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And by the way, oh, all this fundraising, over. you gotta know, folks, if you're giving money to Trump, he's probably spending it on wax lips and uh, coffee, you know? <laughs> because he doesn't have to spend it on anything else but himself. Right. It, this is the new way he's earning a living. <laughs> is by getting people to send him money. So when something like this happens, he gins it up so he'll get money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, so I'm a little bit behind on it, um, you mm -hmm. know, because of what I had going on today. But, I mean, look, if you took documents you're not supposed to have, then that's against the law, then it's against the law. So, yeah, you know, they're going to look into it. I mean, other people have been in trouble for those very same things. And, uh, you know, uh, Trump himself well, was, okay. was, didn't, was didn't, very... Uh, didn't Snowden get in trouble for that? Um, well, I mean, that's what I was going to say. You know, he was a very hard talker about people who leak things, but the way that they leak things was by taking documents that they were not allowed to take home with them. Um, so why he didn't, you know, leak anything, or at least nothing that we know of, Okay, but you know, he, he took a very hard line on things like that, and then he's sort of participating in these activities himself. So, um, at least peripherally, that's what we know. I mean, look, they say they took documents back that were not supposed to be there. I mean, there's really no excuse for them to be there, um, especially at this point because you know they've been missing and they've been asked for many times. Um, so it's 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 kind of hard to play dumb, you know. At this point, it's not going to have much of a. Uh, I mean, if they also, really have these also, documents, this is a, this is a guy you don't. This, this is a guy you don't want to see have confidential materials like this, because he was known when he was president as being a prime leaker of information. I mean, uh, certain certain people in our government wouldn't give him the full story about stuff because they didn't want him to have all the confidential information he could, would normally be given because he was famous for leaking it. He leaked some stuff to the Chinese well, I mean, when they were there. I find it hard, hard to believe that he wasn't advised not to bring that shit with him either. Uh, he, yeah. he, 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 somebody advised him not to, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. I'm sure somebody was standing at the door saying, I wouldn't bring that with you, you know. Well, yeah. somebody well, else I mean, had, I think somebody else had to yeah, print I mean, this out. Well, somebody no. else had to print these documents out. Trump is not smart enough to do it himself. So whoever printed these documents out and gave them to Trump to take to Mar-a-Lago should be hung in a public square. I don't think these were necessarily things they made copies of. I think these were the originals. Probably. I'm sure they are. I mean, I yeah, these were the originals. He, he claims Why not just take the original, not have anything laying around. 
Yeah. But some of it, some of it could only be viewed in a skiff. I, I said to somebody uh, t- today at some point, I can't remember who it was, why do you think he wanted to keep this material? And th- they said to sell it. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have a reason. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I mean, there'd be no other reason for him to want to keep this stuff, except yeah. that, that he might have something the Russians might. Yeah, pay I, for. I don't I don't know what uh, you know his reason would be. I mean, look, yeah. I mean, if if people uh, you know support his policy or his idea, not that they're really his, but I'm just saying the ones that he uh, pronounces his mm-hmm. policies or his mm-hmm. positions or. You know uh, things like that. Mm-hmm. So be it. I mean, I I have no problem with that. Even if I were to have a disagreement with some of them, I would say, okay, that's a policy, you know, issue. But I mean, look, I I I don't really know how anyone could find, you know, Trump as a person of integrity or trustworthy. Well, you're, you're, he's right below or, you on or, this panel, or, or 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 any of those things. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I guess if someone does, fine, you know. But I mean, I what I would evaluate people fine. And I, I don't want to have any sort of arguments about, well, what about this other Democrat who was, uh, I don't care because I don't support those people either. That's what right. I'm saying. You're not going to get over on me on any of that. Well, stuff I don't because think I have never hmm. supported those people. They've never had anything well, to this, to the, of this, of this nature, uh, with this uh, severity, uh, to happen. Yes, Phil. Now I heard two stories on this one story uh, which I heard on an MSNBC uh, YouTube thing was that Trump took these boxes from the White House and brought them to Mar-a-Lago. The other story I heard, and uh, I don't know which one is true, is that these documents were uh, brought to Mar-a-Lago when he was president and uh, still there, and they wanted them back, and he was in negotiations to return. Uh, so some people made it sound like Beacons took the stuff from the White House and brought it down to Mar-a-Lago. Mm-hmm. And uh, other uh, reporting agencies said the stuff was there and he didn't physically take it down well, there. What I heard was is that he took it when he left. You know, yeah. as part well, of the stuff he moved down to Mar-a-Lago. Regardless, is it, is it even supposed to be out of the White House? That, that's no. the question. Yeah, but while he no, was president, not. he was using Mar-a-Lago. It doesn't matter. I don't think he can have it outside the White House uh, if it's classified. Uh, he may have deemed that the stuff wasn't uh, 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 classified. No, he, no, he, 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 he can't doesn't deem it. it. He, does, he doesn't deem when it. He was, when he was president, he could have unclassified No, he couldn't. Some things he no, could he not. couldn't. Here's why he couldn't, Phil. Because yeah. there are certain things you have to do in order, even if you're the president, to declassify top secret information. And that is you have to go through several agencies who agree that this stuff can be declassified. You can't just go, I'm president, it's all declassified. That's what he's trying to claim, but it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a claim that will not hold up in court. Right. Well, in any case, if it was, then they wouldn't, then they wouldn't want it back. Then it right. would be able to be moved to what's called the public record of you know the office of the president which would mean i believe in seven years it would all get released anyway but in either case it still doesn't belong to him the originals belong to the archives under you know the 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 in it the national records act the nra and they belong to the national archives and records administration nara so i mean you know in any case it, it doesn't matter i mean if that were the exact case it may reduce the severity of a charge or something like that but it's it's still a violation of of protocol but that case is unlikely anyway i'm just saying well they were they were saying that uh that that uh, these materials some of them may have had to do with uh, nuclear secrets maybe not our own maybe nuclear secrets we had on russia or whatever but they were nuclear in nature um, you know, I mean, there, there's a question here of whether by doing this, he was putting this country in, in grave danger. And that's... But they're going to have to prove that. Carries no. around documents like that, you know, uh, mm-hmm. that they're not supposed to. It, it puts us in, 
in danger just because anytime you violate that protocol, there's a risk. I mean, that's why there is the protocol that there is. And, you know, if you look at it from an intelligence or a military point of view, they don't ever believe or buy into the argument that, that yeah, but this one here isn't really as nearly as important as, you know, the secret location of bin Laden paperwork. It wasn't like it was that. Well, the military and the intelligence have said it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was the lowest level classified or the most. It, it's we have to treat it, you know, all the same because we can never I, I, have. I think the most innocent of all this problem. stuff that was was there was what the uh, Roger Stone. Uh, uh, well, pardon. Pardon. Yeah. There was yeah. a copy of that. So, you know, I mean, I don't you know, like I said, we don't have the details, but I mean, mm -hmm. You can't you can't have that kind of stuff i mean you can't really make uh excuses for it based on the substance of it i mean if it is classified as classified or top secret or whatever the level is then that's what it is even if it's like i said even if it's a lower level what may seem like not right. as that important right. or whatever it, it it doesn't matter it's been deemed as such i mean you know, it's it's there's not a, really a difference there. Alan, they're going to find the signed document where Trump pardoned um, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> right. No, uh, the Roger Stone pardon supposedly was the the least. Uh, it was that was considered personal. I think it wasn't. The public deemed, knew about it was still it. a presidential document. It is a presidential document, and those okay. should go into either. Uh, the uh, the uh, National Archives or the National Archives could lend them out to his library if he ever has one, but he's never talked. Yeah, about but the National Archives, yet. when the library is open, then the National Archives will run mm -hmm. the archive section of the library. Well, we have a newly minted I Trump mean, fan here in Tony. What did you think about all of this today, Tony? Oh, God, I hate to even think of it. <laughs> I'm going to think has about he had it. any coffee? <laughs> uh, I had a half a cup, actually. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But I'm going to, listen, I'm going to make this all play out because I'm very curious to see what the files are. That's number one. I'm not going to jump to conclusions. You might never find yeah. out. We may not. Because see if them. they're top secret, you're not going to well, find out. Well, let's, I would imagine if they're really that bad, then they're going to have to bring him up on something then. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if they don't bring him up on anything, then I guess it's not that top secret. Well, we'll see. And can I ask a stupid question? This is just me thinking off the top of my head. Uh, you do How long is Trump out? Yeah, right. Mean, you can speak when I'm done, Al. Uh, he's out of office, what, 18 months? Yeah. Yeah. How come it took them this long to find these boxes now? No, they've been trying to get them since he left the uh, White House. They've been trying but to get been these. they've been trying to do it with subpoenas, and they have not cooperated. Right. But here's the question, though. I still well, wait, say. I just I, answered your question. Yeah, oh, you asked the stupid question, and it got answered. Uh, okay. But I didn't speak to you, Alan. So when I speak to you, you can speak. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Well, okay. he certainly can comment on he, something. Yeah, he could, that. but I'm trying to speak, and he has to cut me off. That's very rude. Uh, now you know what it feels like. Well, you kind of suck the air out of the room a lot, but that's just me. <laughs> I like it. That's not a shit sandwich this time. No more no, coffee it's not. for you. <laughs> no, I had a half a cup. I just know an idiot when I see one sometimes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, be nice. Be nice. I'm being nice, but I well, just got to appreciate that. That's why I won't let he's gonna, you. Uh, next, he's going to call you an asshole again. No, I, I, yeah. no, but he interrupts me a lot when I'm trying to get a train of thought. Yes, out. That's uh, all. yes uh, Vernon. You can speak. One, one thing that was discussed today that I, not too many people are talking about is that there may be a possibility that documents existed at Mar-a-Lago that were destroyed. And if that's the case, and he's yeah. brought up on those charges... He's facing 20 years per incident. Wow. You know what I don't want to get, Vern? I don't want to interrupt you. I hope that if they find something, I'm all for justice, okay? But what I don't get is, is he that, st I mean, why would you bring home documents that I can see him burning it, something? It, it isn't It isn't the fact that he's stupid, but he, has, it is he has too much hubris. He thinks he, he can actually right. get away with it. Yes. Uh, John Larkin okay, has his hand up. Yeah, here's my theory. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of evidence in that 
that stuff that he brought. I mean, because we all know the guy is corrupt, uh, you know, and there's so many things that he's got that he's hiding. And so some of those documents, they might some of the documents that aren't even classified might have information for the other uh, cases that are. Well, uh, the, it, what happens is they can go yeah. if they go in and they're looking for specific stuff. And in this case, the the files that were confidential and top secret and so on that he didn't wouldn't hand over that they were having a hard time getting him to hand over uh -huh. but if they find something else in the process yeah they can i mean i'm all for that. justice they I can mean, look I mean, into that so sure yeah yeah sure uh, absolutely yeah and now phil's going to no. tell us why we're oh. full of crap well, you know, I heard what was uh, listed in the warrant today, and they said uh, miscellaneous uh, secret, miscellaneous top secret, miscellaneous papers, miscellaneous, miscellaneous. Yeah, they, well, they, they, no, because they won't tell you exactly what they are, Phil, because that would be giving up top secrets. I want to know what it is. So Plus, you say, it, oh, hmm? Plus, Plus, there's an ongoing investigation. But yeah. they're supposed we'll see all to that stuff when they indict him. Sorry, no, I think they're supposed to list what it was. No, they they listed miscellaneous. No, now, no, no, no. They no. did take four pair of Melania's underwear, but uh, <laughs> but that was Tony's only that was only, right that was only for sniffing purposes. Right. Okay. So that was that was so that the dogs they give it to the dogs to track him when he ran into the into the forest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, it's like a soap opera, really. I'm riveted to the TV with this guy. I actually am. Really? I'm being honest. He's like, I'm telling you, he's John Gotti, Alex. I don't. You, <laughs> you all say, oh, he's all no, John Gotti did some good. What, Unless what we get Sammy happen? the Bull to flip him. I don't know. It's got to come from inside, I think. What, what could happen in November if the House and the Senate flips? Uh, what happens to these investigations? Oh, these investigations continue. The, the, the FBI, you don't get rid of the FBI director or yeah. the head of the... Uh, Department of Justice Department is of Justice. totally different. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different part of government. You can't close that down. What, what, what would save Trump is if he goes to jail and a, and a Republican gets elected, and the rebel, Republican... He, he could pardon him. him. He could pardon yeah. him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What, or if he dies... Or if he dies. Yeah. Alan? Get out of that way. Uh, so two days ago, all the Republicans, senators, and congressmen were yelling that this was an illegal search and all this other stuff. And now that it's come out, they're all quiet. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because because yeah. now they're looking at the 2022 election going, poor timing. This can hurt us. Yeah. Uh, what they're saying, from what I hear, is that this is much about nothing and that the uh, we'll FBI has a lot of egg on its face, as well as the Department of Justice. That's not what I heard today, even, from, what the, I heard even from the Republicans. The Republicans today were suspiciously quiet. You didn't yep. hear a word from any of the usual suspects on yep. this deal. Absolutely. Uh, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene did something Oh, today. well, she's not one of the usual suspects. She's, she's just a fucking she's moron. She's the sharpest... Uh, what was she asking the box. for? Was it uh, to get rid of Garland? Uh, oh yeah, sure. Get yeah, rid she of... wants to defund the, the yeah. Department oh, defund of the Justice. FBI, yeah, like that's right. going to happen. Yeah, but if yeah, you want right. to defund the police, she's not for that. No. See, but she's for defunding the FBI, which is what the police. Uh, they're, they're a weaponized arm of the of the uh, current government, uh, oh. al along with the IRS agents that they have hired to come after you. Oh, that's funny. The FBI helped Trump get elected. Why would they go after them? Uh, yeah, no, because they pulled, uh, what's his name, pulled back and said he wasn't going to prosecute Hillary at the last minute. Yeah, but the last minute. He should have kept know. his mouth shut. No, he and didn't he say he wasn't prosecute. going to prosecute her. He said there was nothing to prosecute her on. Right. Uh, you mean like the 33,000? No, no, forget about it, Phil. He said there was. The closet. They had looked at it. They had looked at it and. Uh, at all the evidence, and they found nothing they could uh, they could charge her with. I and guess, do you know uh, why they do you know why they said they buried they buried uh, his ex wife at his golf course now, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. They said there's more classified in, in, her, in her coffin. There's more classified documents in there. Dig her up, dig her up. Maybe we have to dig her that up. That actually huh? would be a smart move. Well, I I think you know uh, I think there's a hubris on the part of Trump that made him think, oh, I can just take this stuff. You know, I can just take it. Yeah. Well, I'm the yeah, president. I'm sorry. Well, I just and by the way, by the way, up until a few uh, years ago, this wasn't uh, considered a felony. You know who made it a felony? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Huh? Because he thought it would get Hillary. Yeah. Yep. So he made yep. it a felony to do. To, so you why, know. why would he do it if he made it a felony and knew it was a felony? Because he's what, an what, idiot. Because he, is, he has hubris up the yin yang. As it's yeah, called a narcissistic sociopath. And there's I, I more evidence. All the talking points, but you know, we'll see <laughs> what happens. There's Look no up sociopath. Look up a, narcissistic a, sociopath, Phil. Yeah, Look it up can, on the internet, and every one of those qualities, Trump qualifies. You, can't, you, can't. you know, uh, Phil. Yeah. Phil, uh, there's a point at which maybe you should give up the ghost on this guy and go for some Republican who's honest and who's decent. And who I, would do not do this kind of thing? Well, I do support a Republican that's honest and decent. He's currently the governor of Florida. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, let me put now, it this he's way: he's a small government conservative, right, Phil? Yeah, he, yeah he's he a small government fired. conservative, the, the but trouble, he wants the government the, to be in all of your business. Yeah, the trouble with most of these Republicans is that they're not really. Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, they're not really conservatives. No. They're really not. No, they are not some other breed, and I, I don't know what you call them. Uh, fascists. Huh? Fascists. Well, fascists. Uh, no, but they, they, they certainly are not conservatives, because I know conservatives, and, and, I, and, and they're principled, uh, really patriotic people. And they're not like Trump, who I can't call patriotic, because what did he ever do that was patriotic? He wouldn't even serve his country because he had bone spurs. Come on, give him a Please. break on that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. Gotta go with something. No, 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 administration away. accomplishments. Oh, 51 yeah. pages. Oh, and who, that's what he's done. Yeah, and who I wrote, wrote, who wrote, who wrote oh, the oh, my. The, the White House. Oh, who, who wrote White that House. document? <laughs> The, the U.S. government, the White House. The White it's House. Your, it's, your own show. it's your own show, and you could replay all those in your life. Yeah. What, Loser. What, what, Imagine. <laughs> 51 pages, 50 year blank. Alex will give you a show for that, Phil. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. It doesn't, it pays too much, uh, and I, I, I can't afford to work for it. <laughs> I actually don't have time. Yeah. You could have Tony host it. Yeah, oh, I could be a side. Cut everybody off. Can I sit on the couch like Ed McMahon, Alex? If you hire Phil, <laughs> Ed McMahon did nothing on that show. I was watching all Johnny. Well, the did only you... person on this panel that I would actually let do a show is is Josh. Josh has the 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 brains to host a show, you know. Hmm? Uh, well, thank you to all did the it rest once, of us. And I know. thought it was what a nice show. What? Good night, folks. Josh did it once, and I thought it was a nice show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's very smart. You know, I mean, uh, but uh, you know, it, it, no, you would not be a good host, Alan. I don't want to be a host. Well, then, do, why did you even and say thank you very much for? You no, know, the the problem. <laughs> there, all not, the rest of us couldn't be, but no, I'm certainly not going to let Tony host this show. No, no I was saying, can I be like Ed McMahon for you, Alex, sit on the couch? Well, no, you can't no, even do that. Ed I just want to drink my coffee well, and get the. Hello. Gas. The problem is not hosting. The problem mm. is all the prep and the time mm. that it takes lining up guests, uh, doing all the prep. If you're going to do a show, you got to do it right. And uh, for that uh, hour or two or hour and a half that you might do a show, there might be 15 hours of prep that has to be done for it. Yeah. And, you know, that's a lot of time. And, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, I put all that time in on this show. No, <laughs> you don't. And I know, you know, that you can wake up in the morning and do these things blindfolded because I've done them with you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but the uh, but other people actually need to to do the work. Uh, that you've developed over uh, a lifetime of uh, of experience, and uh, you know you did have uh, uh, producers which did prep, 
Mm-hmm. I wasn't one of those kind of producers. Yeah, Albert I, used to do prep for me. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the, the quality of the show with the prep, uh, especially for someone that doesn't have your experience, mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, you, you have to have that, you have to have that prep. Yeah. What about if you do a, a show on carpet? Imagine that. Yeah. That's a pretty short mind. show. You, do it. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 your daughter's here. I, I won't say that they, uh, that they, uh, you won't uh, make carpet jokes. You won't make carpet jokes. Yeah. No, you know, we don't have to match the drapes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why are you so sweaty? <laughs> Why are you, what did she say? Why are you so sweaty? So sweaty. I just washed mommy's. Oh, I, I, did something, was talking I, did, about I did something illegal just a minute ago. I washed the oh. car outside. Uh, the the oh, water no. police will be at your doorstep in you, just. You know what they're minutes. thinking of doing? They're thinking of making lawns illegal. Really? Yeah. The yeah. amount of water that lawns soak up okay. is way beyond the water that you and I use to drink, to shower, to do everything else. Just I can order, I can order those phony lawns. The carpet manufacturers actually make. Uh, yeah. A carpet that's that's a lawn. You can use it for playing golf, and your thing, mm-hmm. and you don't mow it or anything. Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I have that material available to me, it, but I it's, don't. It's that's called astroturf, true. right? Uh, no, it's uh, it was, it's sort of like that. Some of it's really long, uh, and you know, like a like a regular lawn. By the way, like Adrian, Adrian, is a toupee. Adrian, Adrian, a Adrian, Adrian got a kitty. Yeah! Wow! Nice. <laughs> Nice cat. Yeah, yeah. I like the stripes. It kind of looks like a raccoon. Is that yeah. like a serval? Is that uh, no, like cats? I don't know much about cats. No, no, it's just a uh, cat. How old is that cat? It looks like a, about a year. Young. No. Uh, yeah, four, four and a half months. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kidding. Cool. Where'd you go to a shelter and get it? Yep. Good for you. Good for you. Cool. You know, it's always good when people get to uh, get. Yeah, so, Silicon Valley Humane Society. Brian yeah, and I have good. a friend. Uh, Brian and I have a friend uh, who has a, a couple of servals. Is that what they are? Yeah. I think that one day we're going to wake up and see on Facebook that John's been eaten by those. Well, cats. no, Marjorie. No, Marjorie. <laughs> Ronnie, my ex-wife, um, had a serval. Um, yeah. He used to stay with me occasionally. Big uh-huh. kitty cats. They're big. They're big. Aren't they this aggressive? one wasn't that big, but then my other girlfriend, Xanthi. Uh, when she lived in Cleveland, had a serval, and he was, I, I mean, I woke up one, one morning at her house, and the cat was like standing on my chest. I couldn't breathe, and it was like I was being woken up in the middle of the jungle by a jungle cat. You know, amazing. remember that guy, that guy from Indonesia, where he had the, uh, what were those things called? That remember the guy from Indonesia that used to call in, and right. he had uh, the uh, thing died. In his wall or something? No, that was a that was a that was a hey, Bree, Bree. Yeah, Bree, but it was Free. some kind of an animal or something. Yeah, some weird animal. Yeah, yeah. Well, a civet. Anyway. It was a civet. A civet. Yeah, a civet. yeah, yeah. Something like that. Rats die in people's yeah. walls all the time. Well, we're running yeah. over time, and we're not talking about anything in particular. So, you know, I probably yeah. should bring this thing to a close. But I thank you all for joining me tonight, in spite of the fact that we got a kind of a late start for this. Oh. Hey, just one it. other thing. Well, Any it's not other like we're going to interfere with Jack's show. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, are there any Jack reports on his... Uh, I talked to him today. He's uh, He seems to be feeling much better. You know, so we'll, we'll, we'll just see. We'll have to wait and see. He's still at that same nursing home and wants to slice his wrist that way. But, you know. But he anyway. Can he show from the nursing home? They, what? Can he do the show uh, from the nursing home on an iPad? I, I, he really should, actually. He could. Anyway, listen, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Alan. I appreciate it. And thank you to Josh. I appreciate it, too. Boy, it is hot in here. It's just been so hot lately. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, uh, we're, 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 we're going to thank Vernon Nunn for sure for being here okay. and hope your rib gets better. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Phil, nice having you here. Uh, uh, Tony, nice having you here, I think. I am not. I haven't figured that one out yet. John Larkin, always nice. And Adrian, so, so nice of you to bring Brian along to our program, Adrian. We really appreciate it and allowing him to be on. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, she's messing up the hair. Messing up the hair. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave Bye. goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, yeah, I, we sure will. Everybody, say goodbye. And uh, let me see here. Okay, let me turn my camera here. I forget how to do things now. It's just weird. It's really strange. Ah, oh, well, I'm a little loopy. Uh, I get loopy late at night. Uh, somehow I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to use some stuff to wake me up. The coffee doesn't do it anymore. Anyway, I'll see you on, on uh, Monday for the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the pop-up show. And then we'll be back here uh, next uh, Wednesday at 10.30 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me tonight. And thanks to the governor for being here.